Hello, fellow watchers and enjoyers. Ash and Piggy here from Watching Wolford bring you yet another edition of the Watching Wolford podcast. It's episode number 65, and today's episode is going to cover the biggest storylines and takeaways from week 13 of 2024, or the episodes from the 25th all the way to the 28th. Um, and just for the, uh, you know, the usual stuff, first and foremost, the main storylines are going to be Dean frames Jean, Martin and Priya, Whitney returns to the square with a surprise, and finally, Balum is over, which Let I'm sure on. there'll be many, many tears cried today as a result of the episodes, and I look forward to fucking just... Oh, are you sad now? Fuck off! We don't want you back, Balum stands. We don't want you back. I was a former Balum stand, and I'm, you know... Uh, it's like when you go to prison, you find God, right? I am, I am redeemed. I am truly redeemed. Uh, but yeah, and the, obviously the podcast, we do it every week. It's half an hour. The first half an hour is us shooting the shit, and then the final, however long the podcast goes on for, is us talking about the EastEnders. So if you do want to just hear about the EastEnders, go ahead and skip to the 30-minute mark. Roughly around there It's when we transition over. But... As is customary, we've been doing it for 65 weeks. Jesus. 65 weeks of this. So the usual, mate. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Got a new table. Yeah, Piggy's actually sat up in a chair. They, 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 they only just invented them in Ireland. Fuck, how's it going, Pat? <laughs> Fucking shut up. Up like this now in the chair. I'm still leaned over. Yeah, yeah. Picky somehow with a, with a chair with a back on it just goes. Actually, <laughs> I mean, mate. like if I sit up like this, you know, I can do. Yeah, I just said your posture is fucked, mate. Your posture is fucked. It is. I keep trying to it tell is. him like you need to fix your posture. You're gonna become a hunchback, and he's like, ah, it's fine. It's not fine. Uh, I'm gonna be the hunchback of uh, till the end. <laughs> oh, oh, like, yeah, it's been going good at least. My like, dad, like Poppy, you know, if he if he comes back, you could probably see him just hit Poppy's head through uh, the door. It's, it's out of frame, don't you worry. Ah, damn it! Just having Poppy. Hello, fuckers. How's you going? Um, um, I've got my camera. Like, I've got this still <laughs> on my table. Yeah, and I've also. If I the oh oh no it's stuck, if I the illusion I have this. Yeah, just to make people think that we we have good audio. Yeah, yeah. So have you actually talked about it just yet? Uh, well, well, essentially, Piggy's Piggy's laptop is pretty much dead at this point. The USB ports are dead. I don't know how or why, but. It happens. It's a cheap, shitty laptop, but it served a good purpose. What from August till now? Not bad. But obviously, the plan currently is that I'm going to build Piggy a PC of his own and going to send it over, ship it over, and that means you know that's why Piggy has a new desk and table, a uh, desk and chair rather, and obviously, you know, get to I don't know, just get to experience having a PC. Properly for the first time, can actually play games. Second time, I had a PC before; it was on Windows Seven. Uh, yeah, and, and then, and then my fucking, and then me, me cousin who got me the uh, PC for free went, "Oh, I need to take that back, thanks." <laughs> so yeah, that was my experience. Um, I'm doing good, by the way. Just you know. It was fun bringing this desk over because, you know, you had my father. It was the guy saying, come on, come on, you fat fuck. Come on, lift it. Lift it. Lift it. And he's like, oh, fuck off, son. And they just had me that fucking table. And I had her off on his shoulder, over a wind, brought it over. And uh, I'll never forget we're trying to cross the road. And he took some crap the other end of that. Oh, I was yeah, shuffling you guys don't have a fucking. You guys don't. You, you don't have a car, do you? No, no, no. So you had to. You had, how far do you have to lug it back? Back to your flat. Uh, 
across the road and down a little like hill. Like it's a little hill in the entrance way. It's not even a hill, it's just a little like little steep piece of grass. That still sounds uh, I yeah, but I'll bet you I'll bet you were barely holding it though. You're like eh 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 I can't um, I can't hold it. I was trying to hold it, honestly. Um, yeah, yeah, but, but I, was I, don't know, I, I don't feel like I don't feel like you you you, you put your, your whole hog into it. I don't fall my full pig ossie into it now. Yeah, you should. You, um, you bastard. So like, <laughs> so like, I I was just shopping it along with it. It's like, oh fuck it, just give me the fucking tail. Lobs it on his back, and then I nearly broke it, bringing it in the back door. Because he said, grab the end of it. So I assumed he meant the other side of the corner. Like, no, grab the grab the bottom of the legs and lift it over the couch. <laughs> and this, the polar bear nearly got killed again. Yeah. His legs got blown off again. Yeah, leave a little. As someone who's who had little... to lift a lot of shit in, the, in my previous line of work, I'd be fucking furious. Just like, I don't care if you're not the strongest. Just be helpful with it. Just be helpful, right? Just don't fucking give me all the weight. Don't fucking angle it so I have to, like, bend my knees up. Just fucking hold up your part. I'll do my bit. Stop fucking being lazy. <laughs> I was genuinely trying, honestly. Um, yeah. But... Uh, it was just funny, because my dad said, give me directions. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why you're yelling. No. He's like, sorry. So, so I'm not saying you're out of shape, but... <laughs> no, you're out of shape. It it does look like a fairly how 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 heavy's the desk? It looks like it kind of light. It's a light one. This also also the thing is this didn't this came pre built, so it'll bring across yeah. pre built, and um, because this was the only desk left in stock and muddies, so we so the guy even bring it up to the counter, pay it, quit for it, and bring it back with you. So he did. Okay. It's a very, it's 110 quid, so we got it for 50. Decent. Um, pretty good table. My first time sitting at it, actually. I feel, I feel like, I feel like Joel J. Joel J. John and Jameson from Spider Man now. Yeah, yeah, Tiffany you actually Texas have a proper Spider-Man. desk. But, yeah, yeah, and you, that, you know. I, you you can now you can now take the piss out of your. Out of your I, I'm going I'm going to work going to work dad going to work sat in the chair not in my bed. Going going to fucking work. Um, that also means you're not likely to just doze off before fucking getting that fucking chair. You're not having a sleep in that fucking chair. I'm sure you try. <laughs> I'm sure would, you try. I would. Um, but yeah, I love I love it. I I like this now because I I feel like a proper person. I thought mean, it's on top of the, as at the bottom of the desk. It's just leaning on top of it, like I'm just fucking enjoying myself. Fucking hell. Yeah, no, I definitely I, I don't know. One thing I found like a couple of years back is obviously I've been, been doing this sort of shit for a while. But like, if I were just to lay in my bed all fucking day, I'd feel so much more tired. Like, it's nice to have that separation between, all right, time to work, and all right, time to fucking sleep. Uh, it's nice to kind of not blur the lines, but... Yeah, it's just all getting set up for when I build Piggy a PC. Uh, be the first one I've actually built uh, by my... Well, I say by myself. My, my best mate's like, oh, you build a fucking PC now, yeah? Oh, bloody hell. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll build it too. It's like, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I found this part in the trash rack. Would this be crying? Well, I've just bought the new part, Piggy, and uh, don't worry if it smells, but it'd be fine. It'd be fine. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, some some cool stuff. Means that obviously Piggy's camera won't be fucking. Piggy's camera can be in one place, and I have to keep fucking cropping it up, cropping it back and forth. <laughs> it's a fucking. You know, actual actual webcam, actual fucking setup, consistency. Ah, oh, be great. We 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 can be actual. We can actually fucking. Uh, I remember before, like we started recording, I had my phone out with Angle, where it was like, um, 
shot up where you could see them and then move and my face like I was about to shit on the fucking camera and I got them Twitch streamers which they've changed their rule now I don't know if you know this but they used to be Twitch streamers and they used to have um they used to have so they have the normal screen right so they all see their face and their you know their boobs and then on the bottom screen be their ass but it's not like in underwear taking a bikini and it's like very tight on the butthole and so both the cheeks are hanging out and then like the, the gameplay would awfully be in a small screen look i i don't i don't fucking care i like i think it's quite smart honestly fucking, it is. It i don't is. care like like, I don't know, I just hate the people who are like, oh, it's ruining the fucking platform. It's like, you wank, don't you? It's like, of course you fucking do. Stop acting so pure like Twitch is some fucking... Some people can't go into old fucking porn up, you know? Some people have to get their kicks, but they can fucking have them. All right, it's private providing... I don't fucking care. Oh, it's just... My favourite. Twitch, Twitch streams just aren't going to grow because it's, it's a sexualised platform. Mate, there's only fans. There's any other fucking site out there. You think the kid's not fucking found it yet? Like, come on. I just hate people getting all fucking aggro. I don't like, think an aggro. Out of all the ways to make funny. money, it's not that bad. Like, attractive, attractive woman, attractive bloke, do it. Fuck it. Who cares? Uh, but you're just taking away from other people on the platform. No, they're not watching you. They're not watching your stream with five fucking viewers playing fucking Minecraft for the 730th time. <laughs> like, it's not the same audience. Just I'm oh, just fed up about it. Like, yeah, sure, maybe you shouldn't be exploiting all the rules and, like, fucking making it worse for everybody else, I guess. But also... Why don't Twitch just set some fucking standard rules that they actually stick to and not just fucking go, ah, this is fine. Ah, oh, we're changing the rules again. It's like, just don't fucking allow it in the first place. Either get rid of it entirely or just fucking, just don't. Just let it happen. All right? My, my favorite, my favorite one that I've seen was this woman. So like her, her face and her entire body. And then the gameplay, which this is totally unique, and I love it. I'm it's pretty totally sure I saw unique. this too. Didn't she green screen her art? Yeah, so she like, green screen her art. She was playing Fortnite, and, was and she would green screen it. So the Fortnite would be like on her ass. It was fucking hilarious. Like, yeah, yeah, that. That's, I just, that, that's genius. That's yeah, genius. I just, I just get annoyed by people complaining. Like, it's, it doesn't affect you. Like, Twitch isn't becoming worse because there are people who are kind of, I would say, exploiting their body to do what they fucking want. People are just using their body to have horny people give them money. Like, motherfucker, we're doing it, and in every industry does that. <laughs> like, every fucking industry does that. Stop getting up. Like, we're not some fucking Puritan state, right? You wank. You fucking masturbate. Stop fuck. Grow up. Uh, like, like, come on! For the first time, we're we're suddenly, for for about five minutes, we've been sex positive. But suddenly, when a Twitch streamer gets her ass out, like, fuck, fucking, hell, these fucking, it's like, grow up, right? We all do it. It's fine. Fucking grow up. <laughs> Twitch isn't pure in the first place. How many fucking kids are getting exploited for gambling? Like, <laughs> in multiple forms. Just grow up. There we are. That's my rant about the Twitch stuff. Like, who the fuck cares, man? They're not your viewers. Yeah, they're, they're changing the rules, sadly. Which I'm like, ah, come on, Twitch. I want you to be more outlaw. I yeah, want but, you to be yeah, but they'll wild just wild fucking... Less. They'll just fucking... It's like, oh, don't do it for a prolonged period of time. All right, here is my 29 minutes of arse, and then a minute break, and then another 29 minutes. Like, it, look, Twitch rules are made to be exploited. It's like people complain about this, but they don't complain about all the like big streamers just watching fucking YouTube videos and just like ex just exploiting the lack of copyright system on Twitch and then just 
playing fucking anime in full. Like, complain about that? Not fucking these people, for fuck's sake. Uh, it was under a story, I think it was on Kit, where a guy streamed the Super Bowl, like, in full. Like, yeah. like not like the, not like his face is the only thing, so you can only see this, like, his face. No, you had the fucking full Super Bowl, like, play on a screen with his face reacting to it. And I'm like, you, you, like, you, you don't have permission to air this. Like, I understand it, it like, uh, it's illegal. Like, but you're not permission that. What the fuck are you doing? You're going to get into a lot of shit. It's like my, one of my favourites is Paige, or Soraya, she's now known as, uh, the British wrestler who had a movie about her, um, where she fucking, she she got banned on Twitch because she played a dumb and dumber in full. She, <laughs> so why she are like, people such fucking idiots? Just stop, like, yeah, be, on, stop guys, being stupid. She said, come on, guys, let's watch Dumb and Dumber. And I go, oh, you fucking, oh, you fucking idiot. Yeah, it's just rules are made to be broken, I guess. But then again, the, the English phrases typically do it and then apologise later. You know? Ah, oh, you know, it's my bad. Never do it again. Does it in about three fucking days after. Uh, uh, just j- ask me how my week's been so I can go on my tangent. How's your week for me? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, no, it's been alright, honestly. It's uh, I uh, I think I realised that the week off was actually a really good idea. Like, I think it's done a I think it's done a lot of good in terms of feeling a bit more refreshed and not kind of because you know the last couple of podcasts it's been like ah oh, gee it's been like fucking seven billion weeks in a row. How's your week been? I've just been surviving, mate. <laughs> like, no, it's been it's been good, honestly. It's been a nice little week. Obviously, this is the week before your visit, so the next podcast will be in person. Uh, we kind of we announced the Q and A, and obviously, when the fan fiction will be done. Uh, there's a big week of EastEnders next week. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. We've been getting some slightly questionable comments on the on the Q and A. Because the one thing I do laugh at is some of the questions like, oh, you know, how did you meet? Uh, you know, what, what, what stuff do you do? Uh, do you, what size are your feet? We're not answering. Size nine. We're not an- Stop it. We're not answering the feet questions. All right? No fucking feet questions. I don't care if we, we've, we've conquered a niche. You know, the way we'll do it, we'll get some watching Wolford socks. How about that? Do some watching Wolford socks. Get some of them out there. Really work on the niche. Uh, no, but yeah, it's a uh, edge progress, really. Uh, it's kind of back into the swing of things. Next week should be good fun. Uh, it's a, I think it's a lot less. Uh, obviously, when we did it in November, it was a lot more like, okay, we need to get all this fucking Christmas stuff done. But this this approach is just a bit more like, ah, fuck it, Let's have some fun, just chill out. Well, pro- well, we'll probably will spend most of the days recording a shit ton of videos, like. But, you know, we're not having to pad out Christmas. I'll say that much. Like, we'll probably just do a bunch of stuff for one more match. Uh, We'll probably do a bunch of stuff for this channel. Maybe do, like, a tier list in person as well. But who the fuck knows, honestly. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think I think we're, we're moving towards a pretty pretty good direction, honestly. I think one thing's been fun. It's been fun to be able to cover more Hollyoaks. Obviously, this month's been a lot more Hollyoaks-based simply because, uh, well, fucking... There's been a lot of news about Hollyoaks, so it's been fun to cover. I thought about trying to do, like, a weekly thing with Hollyoaks, but I don't really know how far that'll, like, like that'll go. Because, you know, I kind of like Hollyoaks as just a... I haven't watched it in two weeks. Time to watch fucking 12 episodes now. Uh, uh, also, I finally finished Breaking Bad. Finally. Netflix kicked me off whilst I was halfway through the movie. <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, you finished the whole series. Great. And the movie. Or you have 30 minutes left. And I obviously went, ah, oh, fuck. It's like, what? It's like half one. You know, I got to go to bed. I tried to set it up in the bed. Uh, Netflix has finished. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So, I've, you know, pulled it up on me phone. And I've I've finished it. I've finished the series. 
Yeah, it took me about two, three weeks. Breaking Bad, pretty fucking good. Very good show, very enjoyable. Don't think I'll ever watch it again because the uh, pacing and the characters kind of rapidly progress at such a rate where you look up, you look at some of the characters in season one, and you look at them in season five, and you're like, "Holy shit! <laughs> How are you the same person?" But that no, really good, really good. Um, yesterday was a lovely little day as I was just. I was I was watching Breaking Bad. It was it was raining outside. I was enjoying the rain, you know. I was occasionally going down, standing outside the back door, like yeah, because I like rain. Rain's fucking great. It's it's a very calm fucking time. I was also setting up another podcast and one more match, which is usually Piggy's thing. <laughs> usually Piggy's like. Ah, we could do another fucking project. All right, what is it? What if we do insert wrestling promotion? No. <laughs> but um, uh, then Slade was trying to us. Well, how can we do nineties Japan? Well, Piggy, your idea is not so bad after all. <laughs> I just love the fact, right? So, oh, I have this channel idea. And I'm like, wait, wait you, you do this my channel? And I was like, I oh, fucking don't care anymore. It's like, mate, you, you do know you can't do it after running by me. I don't want to be like, we're fucking reviewing Gars on Spring Break. Wahoo! And I'm like, what? What? And I get a bit of a voice, like, you could do Nitro. And they went, no. <laughs> no. But now, for people that don't know, WCW, like, unless you grew up with it, um, it's very hard to go back and re watch it, in my opinion. Yeah. Because it's, um, the pacing is. WCW, just sorry, I know this is an extended podcast, but fucking WCW did not know pacing. They had no fucking clue. Because you'd be watching, so you'd be watching Nitro, right? So you're sitting down, it's 1999, you know, it's a three hour show, let's go. I'm a big WCW fan. Was it actually three hours? Hulk Hogan promo. Hulk Hogan promo. Then a cruiserweight match. Then a slow match. Oh, 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 it's our tail. You know what time it is, Ash? Hulk Hogan promo, and then another slow match, and then a backstage segment that leads to nothing, that leads to a match, and it's David Flair, and then, oh, 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 hour three, you guessed it, lads, who is it? It's Hulk Hogan, and then, mm. like, the main event goes for about five minutes, and it ends in the DQ or a run, and you're like, oh, I, I watched three hours, mate. I watched three hours. <laughs> Wait, what was it actually this? three hours? Uh, Nitro used to be two hours at the start, and then Ted Turner went, guys, actually, you know, it's my, it's, yeah. you know, can we find the age to three? But it's Ugh. like two and a half hours on the network. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, um, It went to like three hours, and oh, Jesus. So <laughs> I don't know if they do it in the later years, WCW, but. <laughs> um. Like when they used to, when they first went to three hours, so like, so say like Rain Stereo was fighting like Juice with Thunder Liger in hour two. They kick off hour, or going into hour two. In hour two, all you <laughs> fucking pyro going on. Yeah, yeah, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, hour two, it's the biggest show of wrestling. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking um, pyro going on. Yeah, I, li- I like, I like how, this is the se- yeah, the second I think he's, he starts like, like big league and just like, what? You you, you you want to do videos on my channel? My fucking channel. I started it, and then it died, and the person who made it fucked off, and then... <laughs> and then... You yeah, know. Techni- technically, the only thing you do is do the titles. Uh, yeah, it's a power yeah, struggle. Yeah. It's a power struggle. Yeah. My um... channel as well. Um, but like I do, I do, I do love because you think I'm and, and, I, and, I'm the, and I'm the host of everything. Uh, <laughs> but yes, it is I, technically I, your channel. I I do love how like he was thinking I'm going to I'm going to do something that's never been done before. Right, well, right. No, no, I wasn't really saying it was a fucking novel concept. I wasn't building uh, it up as some fucking. Uh, it's basically it's covering the Attitude Era wrestling, which as said. As Piggy's inferring, been done to death, but 
honestly, I haven't actually seen too much of shit being covered. It's not really, not much on YouTube, so then yeah, fuck it. Plus, alternative is just more content. So, but yeah, Piggy's um, acting I like I was like Piggy, never been done before. Nah, it was never that. I was just saying, yeah, yeah, but fuck it, it's fine. Got to start think somewhere. You can do a nitro, and then they went no, 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 not nitro, no. Because I just know and, that you're going to get so annoyed. Like, yeah, 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 I've done some, though. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I fucking hated it. It's like, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> I'm not fucking doing that. What kind of nonsense um, are you fucking talking about? That, like, I know you're going to enjoy Nitro, and then you get to the main thing, so that's a little bit Hulk Hogan, then it ends in a DQ because of the end of you all. And you're like, oh, fuck, shake. I know shit wrestling. Oh, fucking come on. <laughs> Yeah, I like, well, like I like shit wrestling, but I don't like boring wrestling. It's just uh, sorry, I know this is East End time, but I just want to say, fucking this. It, the one problem you will find very early on in the Attitude Era is it's a lot of filler, and yeah, uh, like unless you're looking directly for wrestling, in well, it's kind of it's the idea that the pay per views are kind of second. And, like, the actual, like, main shows are, like, fucking car crash fucking work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it's the, for, like, the problem is, it was Finn through so basically, because Finn through so is a fucking mentalist of a booker, and I never liked him. My, my, um, oh, there was something in early TNA that I love, where he, he called, there was this group, and I forget what they were called, and their acronym was SET. A sports extremist, like a sports entertainment extremist, I believe this is what they were called. So you, you shorten it and it's SET. And you know that's very funny because it means sex. And you know what sex is. And it's like, oh, Ruth, so you're fucking like 32, mate. Come on. <laughs> like, Come on, mate. Come on. Because like, you, you have to imagine him in a room, in a room with like all the buckers, the like, guys, guys, guys. You, you, you won't believe this idea I have. Oh, all right, Bruce. So you did fuck the Attitude Era and kill WCW. Come on. Come on. What's this idea? Sports entertainment extremist. Yes. Isn't that fucking funny? No, 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 it's not. Fucking. Yes, it is. It's fine. Uh, yeah, no, it's solid. Uh, but yeah, that's generally what's been going on with this. Uh, we probably could, could elaborate for a bit more, but I think that's... Uh, you know, the, the the EastEnders fans will be crying a bit about the wrestling talk, but it's, it's part of what we do, so, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I think, I don't know, it's kind of wild. It's been interesting to see how we both kind of, you know, we're, we've reached a point where we feel like we're doing a good enough, we'd be doing a pretty good job here, you know. We, we got a good output here, so now we can kind of look to, look to like, p put some other stuff in some other areas. Like, you know, we've been wanting to do some different shit. It's not like, it's like the extent, the extenders will always come first. Like, this channel will always come first. It's the most successful. It's the kind of, I don't know, it's a part of the, like, pride and joy that we've gotten this far and we've, like, had this set of community. But obviously, it's kind of about testing ourselves and seeing what we can actually fucking do. Uh, but also, it's still pretty... We we are I will say in comparison to early January we are taking it a bit more chill though, like <laughs> you know we don't need to fucking you put are. piss and blood into it. We can just put a bit of fucking elbow grease. The only time we will um do Walter and Taff of Felix is for fairly big weeks. We're not doing it next week. I don't care. We're, we're already watching wrestling. You know, so. uh, but like uh, definitely it will be back around November. Each end. Oh, oh we'll, do it, we'll do it for Christmas again. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it for Christmas again. Because the money well, is like, great. Yeah, the, 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 the views are great at Christmas, but throughout the year, it's probably just not worth, honestly. Like, it's just... Uh, would you rather a, a bunch of slightly more interesting 10-minute videos, but a shit podcast, or just a good podcast and none of those videos? Like I just, exactly. I just think it all, it all gets a bit too fucking samey. But yeah, like Wolf on Tap, good idea. But if it's the only thing you do, I'm sure it's better. But well, we're doing a bit more than that, anyways. So, but yeah, that's a that's a pretty good good place to to cull it. Really, I think it's a. Uh, it's just overarchingly 
over overarching it's just overwhelmingly positive in my opinion i think we're at a pretty good point looking forward to next week um it'll be good fun i also all right i don't know for the show but i also shaved my head well wow, shave uh, the side of your head yeah see uh you're off camera there no oh. What? No, no, I don't just, know. Just, just go, just go in the middle and fucking turn your head. Uh, f not, not the side the hair's on. Ah, oh, fuck. St sit back, sit back normally. There we are. Just turn your head slightly. Just, just do like fucking this. There we are. You can see the sides. The sides are shaved. It was like early. I was trying to explain the concept of framing to Piggy as Piggy just like the way the way Piggy's sat is he's sat here. And usually when framing, you want to sit in the middle. So I'm like, all right, Piggy, you're here. Okay, now move the camera so you can be in the middle. It's like, no, no, no fuck, fuck this. I fucking swear, I'm it's, it's like, it's when, when you want small movements. <laughs> uh, when, when you want small movements, you just have to fucking... It's a small movement, small movement. Wait, no, I'll just... Fucking, fucking put it back, man. <laughs> just fucking put it back. Like, like, I quite literally, like, I'm, I'm like in a jungle with fucking lions. And she's like, do not touch the lion's head. It's going to bite you. And I'm like, me a lion. Ah, oh, fuck, he bit me. Well, why'd he bite me? I told you. But, I all right. told you. We've had our slot. I it's probably the most fun half an hour we've had for a while, just full of conversation. So yeah, the week off was good. Uh, but let's actually get into the EastEnders. So the main storylines we're going to cover, and I'll repeat it again because it has been a half an hour. First and foremost, Dean frames Jean. Uh, Martin and Priya date. Whitney returns to the square with a surprise, and finally Ben's exit. But there's a little sub story to start with, as it's been kind of revving up slightly. Uh, Denzel screams at Yolande. Not much else to say, but Denzel obviously continuing his, like, obsession with working out and not being a coward or pathetic because of that fight he had, like, a month ago where Yolande ate shit. <laughs> Just fucking... Uh, poor woman. Uh, but, you know, Yolande essentially sits him down. I think it's because... Because he yells at her, he calls her like a stupid old bitch or something. She's like, oh, come on, mate. mate. She's fucking, she's fucking, she's trying to raise, she's trying to help raise you. Like, everybody else is gone. She's trying to do her best, man. But obviously he doesn't see like, that. Honest, you know, honestly, I know it's not funny. Do you know what, honestly what I was expecting? Oh, when he called her a stupid old bitch, I was fucking expecting a fucking... Uh, 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 Oh, there's always a oh, chance, you... like. Like, like. I thought he was gonna, but like, when there, there, there is like a chance they it. may go there eventually, like as the story progresses. Honestly, like, because honestly, what I just think about one time Jimmy on South Park took steroids and he just beat the shit out of his girlfriend and mom, and it's start calling him a bitch. Like that's what I feel like Denzel's gonna turn into. He's gonna... Alan, Day, shut I like, the fuck I like up, how your only reference for fucking steroid abuse is South Park. Fucking, yeah. so it's on brand. All resting. Yeah. Um. But Yolande sets like sits him down and says, "Look, you have nothing to prove. You're not a coward. You don't need to fucking. You don't need to work out. You don't need to become bigger to prove that that you're enough. You know, like it's fine." But Denzel and I say that his package of the sup of the if the fucking steroids have. Has arrived, but Yolande's taken it because obviously she he fucking screamed at her. Uh, but Denzel needs Yolande to be distracted so he can seal the steroids. He gets uh, he gets Nugget to help him out with it, and Cat catches him, and it causes more problems. Uh, and Denzel and Nugget storm off as they get the package, and obviously Nugget realizes like, what the fuck, you know? These these are steroids, like that's not uh, come on man that's not like something's wrong here you, you shouldn't be doing that and he screams at him george knight kind of separate like i'd say breaks it up nugget walks off 
But like, I found it funny that people were joking that he's already had some pre-roid rage. Like, he's not even on the juice yet. And he's already screaming at everyone. Which is quite funny. I just want you, you, you know one of my favorite Nash segments is fucking one where he yells at Sanjay Dock going, "You're on the juice." I want George Knight to do that. The fucking you're on the juice, brother. You're on the juice. And he's uh, like, "I'm not." But yeah, it's just the it's just the progression of this storyline as Denzel's found himself more and more isolated because you know he's desperate to try and prove himself that he's worth something. So. You know, interesting stuff, done well. Like, no one's favourite storyline, but uh, an interesting one to see nonetheless. All right, next up, probably the one that made people most upset this week was obviously Dean framing Gene. Uh, because he tried, basically, Dean quickly gets Jade out of hospital, which, uh, uh, which surprises Gene. And even further, when kind of, Jade reveals that, yeah, I'm not the one doing the medication. You know, it's not me. It's not, I've not been doing it. And meanwhile, Dean is taking, like, an interview with a with a reporter about the fundraiser, which Johnny just kind of goes, ah, you want the other side of the story? Call me. <laughs> just, I do love how every time Dean's trying to do something, like, trying to do something for himself, just Johnny's like, all right, rapist, how about you fuck off? Do you know like how we talk about how Terry is slap on the head, got him slap head? Yeah. Like I feel like whenever Dean tries to do something good, Johnny comes in, slaps him in the arse and goes, How's it going, rapist? You're not getting away with this today, you fucking rapist. Get yeah. the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know mm. what I, like I, lo- I love it when Johnny does it. It's, fucking, it's, like the, it's like the fucking Van Helsing where it's like with uh, Dracula, where it's, I think it's Dracula with Van Helsing. Maybe mixing up our fucking. But, you know, like, it's just always there to foil. It's like, uh... It's actually fucking Van Helsing? No, no, Frankenstein Van Helsing? There we go. My bad. I mixed up my fucking references. But, point being, it's that, like, it is the Michael Myers to, like, fucking Sam Loomis, where it's like, oh, Michael, you're doing stuff, are you? Well, I'm fucking here, and you're not getting away with this shit. It's great. Uh... Turns out that Dean, instead of just being a fucking idiot, he is, uh, he is, like, alternating the days of the medication, uh, which means that she isn't getting as sick as she possibly could, but, I mean, it's still fucked up. Um, and I will say, like, complicating someone's an- an- anti- anti- antibiotic? Anti- what the fuck? How do you say it? Antibiotics. It still sounds wrong to me. I remember I was in like a lesson and I was talking like antibiotics. I'm like, that sounds weird. Are you uh, going to be like that? Um, but still messing with someone's like medication. It's like Sharon. Sharon's like infertile because she didn't take the antibiotics after getting an abortion. Like, you know, fucking with someone's medication can cause some really serious shit. Like, it's not something to be fucked with just because you don't want to leave. All right. That's why it's really, really fucked. But it does get worse because Jean tries to get Jade out of the house. But when when is confronted by Dean, she says, "I, I fucking know you're doing it." And then, without skipping a beat, Dean goes, "Oh wow, I, why would why would you be hurting Jade? You know, like why would you be swapping out a medication? Like you know, you did it with Lily before. Like why would you fucking hurt Jade? Why would you hurt my daughter?" And so Dean ends up gaslighting Jean into thinking she's caused the problem. So with nowhere to go, she leaves the square to stay with Big Mo for a little bit. Uh, do you reckon Big Mo's going to come back and just punch the shit out of Dean? Oh, I fucking hope so. Something's got to happen. Oh, you, you little twat. Come here. Come here, you little rascal. Um, God. Yeah, what, what do you think about, about Dean flipping on Jean like that? Uh, like, I understand you're not supposed to love it, but, like, even I felt bad watching it, but at the same time, I did love it. I was like, oh, I should have known. I should have taken care. And it's all your fault, Gene. 
How uh, it, could it's you? genuine. It, it's Dean in a, in a nutshell, just like oh, I've been called out, called out, gaslight, gaslight, gaslight. It's like, oh, for fucking fuck's sake! Like, uh, my, all I say is my brother was fucking livid. Just like oh, it's so fucking hard to watch. Get through that bit. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough. Like, like, like him just, I will him just, just, I mean, I'll him. say this as always because people can't seem to separate the character and the actor. I think the actor does a phenomenal job of being this fucking, like, blameless cockroach that he believes he is. Like, I think he's done a really good job of crafting this, like, interesting, nuanced character who knows he is a bad person at the core, but it's easier to say, like, oh, you know, it's. Uh, all this bad stuff's happening to me. It's not my fault. I, I think it's the only way he's kind of learnt to live with what he's done. It's by just being like, not my fault. Happened to me. Uh, but I like I do see people calling like like Matt D'Angelo. I see him like, oh, he's such a shit actor. It's like, nah, homie, he's fucking great. I I still love Matt D'Angelo and the fucking Dana life. Right, it's like, hi, I'm Nick Stender. Welcome to Matt D'Angelo. And he's just playing up to the camera, right? He's like screaming at the people who's like, I don't, don't call me before one. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. Oh. Because he's so great at playing into that, which yeah. I love. Uh, my favourite my favorite bit of that is where he's like, oh, I can't find Jesus. And it's just, it's like, oh, so full of clothes. I'm like, yeah, I'm not wearing any of these today. I'm wearing this outfit. I'm like, oh. yeah. I, I, I really... For for a day in a life, I really want to see Phil Mitchell. I really want to see Steve McFadden. Just Steve, well, what was your day in a life? Phil Mitchell. It's Steve McFadden here. First, I get my coffee. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I don't know why. I, I'd love it. Would be good fun. Uh, all right. So, yeah, like it's it's been pretty rough to watch, but. Like I said, the one thing that makes me feel good is knowing Shirley will be back at some point. I also look forward to seeing Big Mo back because I saw a compilation that someone made of like all the funny Big Mo moments. I'm like, you know what? You know what? You're not bad. Ah, saw it a while ago. I think I retweeted it on the uh, on the Watch and Wolf for Twitter because it was funny. Um, I love Big Mo. I never get sick for. I just I I. I... It's always the fact that I just she's like it's just the fact she's so lovely. And you want to give her a hug and have a pint with her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but like, uh, you know what I mean? It's just uh, she feels like she plays the car, like the character is herself, basically. Like she is that character outside the set. Um, <laughs> it's just so just, funny how she people can... make these compilations too well. Like it's kind of absurd. I just, I just, it, it, I also like, it's just funny because like, a bit, how has Big Mo lasted? Like, she, it's, it's definitely her charisma that made her last. Oh yeah, for like, sure. Like, she does everything she needs to do well. Exactly. Like, she is, like, she like is a, she like people may sleep on Big Mo, but she, she is, she, she may not be iconic, but she is an EastEnders legend. Like. How can I describe it? If she was played by anyone else, she would have been asked years ago, in my opinion. Yeah. But because the actress plays her so well, and you generally believe that she could exist in this world, makes it all the better. Like her selling weave, it was fucking brilliant. Her just selling the ganji. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> like I, I was like, oh, if Big Mom was my dealer, I'd fucking giggle. I <laughs> yeah, but all right. I mean, that's what I'm lo- that's what we're looking forward to, I guess. But moving on, let's wait, wait, hold about... on here. Hold on, here. just imagine her like trying to be like all oh, like modern, like yo, homie, I got the stuff, you know, G. <laughs> just when a hat sideways, like you know, <laughs> big gold chain. <laughs> I don't know why has money to me. I don't know why she yo, dresses like, like 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 a pimp. <laughs> It's only selling weed. Dealers don't actually dress like dealers usually. It's normal people. Uh, spoken as cake. the biggest fucking drug dealer I know. Me. She has a fucking cane and everything that she uses to walk around with. 
Uh, but yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's move on to the next section. Martin and Priya date again. <laughs> fucking hell, what's that? Ooh, any fucking? I shut up. Oh, all right. <laughs> Making faces at the camera. I don't know why you're sitting up or staring fucking dead eyed with a camera, you little, you little nonce. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's sorry, right. sorry, 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 yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so the week starts off as Martin backs up Priya when Avani bunks off school. She cuts a fucking hole through the, sea, through the sleeve, and I guess you could say the, uh, the plan had some holes in it as way hey, terrible. I, I, I was going to have something more interesting, but that's the best I had. A Priya obviously sees right through it. Ravi sees this go down and it piques his interest and he seems jealous. Or at least Avani thinks that he's jealous. And so Avani tries to set up Priya and Ravi. So both Priya, uh, so both Ravi and Martin come to Priya's where she's dressed up all sexy. With the same flowers as Martin leaves thinking it's a threesome. Which is fucking great. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, I'm not really, uh, not really into that, uh, group stuff. Uh, and he just walks off and it's, oh, it's my, great. My favorite line, my favorite line is when, he, when he's in the cafe the following day and he's like, I wanted to di- disappoint two people at the same time and disappoint my parents. <laughs> and then he just sat there, like, okay. And then he's like, they're both dead. And it just bursts out laughing. Oh, okay. It's like when a joke doesn't land. You're like, it's funny because this happened basically half my career on YouTube. Oh, Ash, what do you think of this joke? Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Appreciate it. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it was, a, it was a funny little segment. Uh, we were talking about in the Discord, uh, and we were saying how. We we much more we enjoy having fucking as much as overprotective annoyed Martin is great. It has been fun to see the more fun side of Martin, which old uh, Gilby P from the Discord told us. So if you want some of your thoughts told on the podcast? Get fucking chatting in that Discord. They will be brought up again later on. Ben Mitchell. Yeah. Um. So. The day after, Priya's nervous for the day, and they keep teasing like a Ravi and Priya reunion. But, like, whilst they set up the date, Martin and Priya, like, joke, and they they get it set up, and Ravi says, all right, I'll fucking pay for it, fine. Least I can do. Um, Martin calls her beautiful, and they joke about their track record with partners, and they joke about Martin being bad in bed, but he's a little fucking flirty bastard, and he says, well, you know. Uh, I don't remember the specific wording, but essentially, ah, you know, wait and see, or some shit like that. Not not as bold as that, but just like fruit your fate. Hmm. I just wanted him to go. I'll fruit your fate. Um, but he just kind of, yeah, just you know, wait and see. Maybe you'll maybe you'll see different. Oh, oh, mate, I'll bet Martin. I bet Martin tries in bed, but he's still really shit. But I bet he like gives everything. I, I, I bet he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, so good. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh. It's like Martin. It's been twenty seconds, ah. and he just starts snoring. I don't know. <laughs> he just falls I don't know asleep. Why, but I imagine him doing fucking like techniques on like, on the portion so, like, like, ah you, yes you know, ta- like, ta- 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 time for the alphabet pussy and here we go a b <laughs> if you know that thing you see when people in wrestling when you see someone flip around like they flip around they're like um but i can't really describe but they use their hands and move around on the body and um, that's what i feel like martin does he just flips Mar- around he's like I bet Martin's got, like, one it technique. It basically flips around like that on the body dick part. Like, bet, that's what I imagine. I bet he's got it down to a fine routine. He does, like, he does like 20 seconds of missionary. He does 20 seconds of doggy. And then he just fucking... Oh, 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 oh are you going to do something there? It's... Nah. Want to shock on this dildo, Martin? Hey. 
We got you soaking on a dildo. Stop. <laughs> fucking fucking uh, Billy and Alfie just doing the house. Doing the... It's like there's a video I can't find it anymore, but if you can find it, I'd love to see it. Where it's a bunch of, I believe someone's going to a dart tournament. And you know, for darts, they all dress up fancy. <laughs> there was a Willy Wonka, like, guy dressed as Willy Wonka. And these three on Palumpas on a bus walk past him. Like, Way, you fucking wanker, way, fuck you, way. I don't know why it fuck with me. Um, it's just yelling at Willy Wonka, like, fuck you. Yeah. I love the English. The English are fucking great at the you. <laughs> I don't know how. Oh, the Scottish. Like, there's was, there was another one where, um, where, where this singer was, like, doing a moment of silence at a concert. And this and this um, one shouted something. And this, this guy just responded, Shut the fuck up! And buckled her. Mm. But yeah, it's a, it, it's a nice little date, but Avani arrives and is like, oh yeah, I'll help. And she fucking ruins the date by first saying that, that Priya's, oh, you bought the moose. Ah, oh, she's lactose intolerant. She'll just shit it all out. And then she flirts with Martin. And then she pours a drink on him and says that Ravi's paying for it. And then they get back to the kitchen and Avani kind of goes, look, all right, I don't want everything to change again. Because, you know, she, uh, Priya and Avani have pretty much lived fucking door to door for like the last, like their entire life. They've never really been settled. So she obviously doesn't want to like fucking move or doesn't want to have to fucking change anything. And she kind of wants her and Ravi to get back together, but... I think Avani just wants a bit of stability. But I like it. Like I said, Fun Martin is always a good time. What do you reckon? Do you, do you like, do you like Pri Priya and Martin so far? I uh, don't mind Martin and Priya. I just find it funny because like, Martin sells fruit and veg and Priya like, works on a shop. So I'm not like saying Priya, your options are uh, more open, but... If you choose between Martin, who works on fruit and veg, and between Ravi, who's a sex god, and works in a cafe, you know, you know who I'm choosing, like. I'm choosing the man who could last an hour in bed over the man who, who lasts about 10 seconds in bed. Or, like, the minute a girl touches his cock, he just comes. Like, uh, like, they just literally the hand on it. Oh, oh sorry, look. Um, uh. Like I, I also, I also love how everyone is like, oh, David Wicks is coming back. Why is David Wicks coming back? Martin Lynch and David Wicks. Everyone's like, must mean he's coming back. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You do know he referenced like his fucking brother. What's his brother called again? Uh, Mark. Like he references yeah. Mark all the time. Like, oh, you hate HIV. Well, you know my brother Mark. Oh, Martin, you told me this story about five times. Will you fuck off? Um, like, just because he mentions people doesn't mean they're coming back. Like, people need to realize that. that like, Linda mentions Nick Carter every uh, chance she can get. Like, yeah. Oh, my Nick used to love that. I mean, my Nick used to love that. And then it's like, oh, oh look, people oh, like, oh. like to run a bit rabid sometimes. Uh, but yeah, let's move on from that. Let's talk about Whitney. So, Whitney returns to the square. I still think that Whitney with a baby bump is iconic. Like it's there's something that's just perfect. Uh, Whitney with a fucking like like eight months, just fucking wow, just walking around everywhere, causing problems. I love it. All right, this is what she needed. Uh, but they planned an unprompted baby shower for Whitney, who shows up with Brittany, who is now her foster mom, or at least as far as we know. Brittany, Dick. Exactly. That's what Whitney said to Zach. Uh, Zach didn't like that too much. Uh, Zach sees this and has a face like a slapped ass. I said Whitney will be a great mum, but is a terrible partner. Uh, uh, like, I, like, I'm not saying it's like getting a dog without asking the other partner, is it okay to get a dog? But, essentially, right, from, like, I, I'm not defending Zach, I understand. But from his perspective, Whitney's literally gone, like, hold on, I'll just, this will help. Has literally gone. Oh, oh, oh! Do you want a dog? 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 You have a dog. I didn't say no. I didn't say no. Yes. Yeah. Oh, here's Like, like she genuinely didn't give him the option. Like, it's genuinely like if you went, 
do you want a bacon or a sausage sandwich? And I'm like, all right, make a bacon. <laughs> Thanks, you gave me the option, but but you still you still fucking you still did the other choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I gave so. you the option, but I did it anyways. Uh, like, like, but... like I love it. I love it because like Zach's like. <laughs> I, uh, focus on our family, and it's like Brittany is technically part of your family tree now. Like, yeah. Focus on, focus on my family, Brittany, you bitch. Uh, uh, like it's still. The, I love it. It's still the fucking like. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to foster. Oh, we're pregnant. Ah, fucking hate fostering. Fuck them bitches. Like, fuck them kids. Like what? You <laughs> were fostering like fucking two weeks, like a month ago. Well, three months ago, and you ah, fuck them kids, don't want them. I don't like Britney, though, she's mental. It's like, yeah, but so are you. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Um, but after he after hearing a conversation between Britney and, and uh, Felix, where Felix is like, you know, why, why'd you do drag? And it's like, because I don't have to be me. You know, I, I can be whoever I want to be, which is great. Zach realizes Brittany is feeling like the odd one out and welcomes her into the family and says, there'll always be food on the table for you. Brittany then wets the bed and hides it, but Whitney tells her everything's going to be okay, that we don't, we don't have secrets. Um, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty normal. Someone who's kind of been fucking tossed around and had a pretty rough childhood to fucking wet the bed at this point. I was half expecting you to just laugh at it for some reason. Felt on brand. Um, uh, I did get the chocolate. I didn't know she wet the bed. Yeah, I thought yeah. she had her um, P E R I O D. And I was like, oh, uh, oh, she wet the bed. <laughs> Why are you saying it like it's a foreign fucking like they're a fucking incel? I actually had it. <clears throat> it happens. It's natural. Nothing wrong with like it. I, 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 I thought it was that, but I didn't get it. It was a that she wet the bed. My favorite thing is, I, I relate as a fat guy, is she started storing food like a squirrel, like in the <laughs> bed. I loved it. Just, just, like, cause I like to imagine it's just that thing. Like yeah, yeah, squirrel, you've got fucking has... cinnamon chilling on your desk for some reason. He's like, oh, I've got shit to play with. Just hold up a fucking spotless cinnamon. What What you got cinnamon for? What are you putting it on? <laughs> oh shit, chicken fillet roll. Oh, you're a drum. What? <laughs> uh, fuck it, Um, like, um, do you know the way you're looking at an acorn, or not an acorn? I thought you were my sentence. You know when you're looking at a squirrel and they've like 60 acorns yeah, and yeah. big fat ball cheeks. Like, I like to imagine Brady just like a bit of lump of cheese. <laughs> so, Whitney, so, Whitney, how the, how's the, um, so Whitney, do you want to tell me why your mouth's fat? And she's like, hold on. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Oh, um... Brittany, what's in your mouth? Nothing, nothing. I just like, take it up. Oh, fucking cheese. I just want to have that with a sandwich. You fucking ruined it. At this I, time... Yeah, I will say at this time I I got I got annoyed at Zax. I'm like, I get that Zach's angry, but can you stop being so fucking mardy about it? Just be an adult. Be a fucking adult about it. So, like, oh fuck you. Oh Brittany, you're fine to be it. Fucking hate this bastard. So, like, well, fucking don't f stop blowing hot and cold, you little twat. Stop fucking st stop like allowing her in the door and then fucking like. Stomping on her heels. Just either accept it or say no. I don't want any fucking part in it. Stop fucking doing it 50 50, please. Um, I will say, uh, like, if she started eating my Wednesday day, I'd be like, fuck off. Because I love some Wednesday day. Uh, the problem is, I like Wednesday day, and then the problem is, uh, I, I don't like it. So, I, like, I, I have it for two straight days, and then I'll forget about it. And it just sits in the fridge for a week, and I'm like, oh, all right. Especially with um, I, I don't even really. I I know. I know. Wednesday tells a cheese. I don't know what is it. Soft cheese? Is it a hard cheese? What is it? It's soft cheese, and it has some apricots in it, I believe. Oh, it's delicious. It's all right. I don't mind the little bits and cheese. It's all right. Uh, I just I was just like, trust you to get Wednesday Dale. Back in. Consume, consumer's dream. 
likes for Alison Gromit, gets Wednesday Dale. Ah, oh, fuck you now. Got um, some Wednesday Dale, Gromit. Uh, but yeah, essentially, can Zach fucking just shut either fucking either accept her or fuck off, please, please <laughs> accept her or fuck off. Uh, but yeah, after this, he finds a bunch of food under a bed and cautiously he's like, oh, maybe we should tell the socials, you know. Uh, but eventually he goes, look, come over with to Walford East, we'll make some food and, you know, invites her along. Uh, outside, Whitney accepts a call and Lauren hears her say it's not the right time to be fostering. And turns out Whitney isn't fostering Brittany. She's just fucking stole her. <laughs> like, she... And it's it's revealed that Whitney pays two thousand for Britney, and fucking like she just she just kidnapped her essentially. She gave Whit she gave fucking Britney's mum more money for crack, <laughs> and has just taken her kid. And Lauren kind of spends the next period just being like, probably should probably tell Zach like, <laughs> and then Whitney's like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> and that just I mean, keeps she persisting. She should definitely should tell Zach. I do agree. Yeah, like, like, like I'm not like I don't understand that Britney's mom is a shit mom, but like, from experience I know that. Um, but like, like you you you, you did kidnap a child essentially. Like, like, like you know, if the if the police looked at this, right? If this is real life. I know what you're saying. If this is real life and the police looked at it, so the police is you know he's sitting down, he's looking at the files. He's not going to go. Right, she's a fat addict. You paid her 2000 and took the child. Well, I'm just going to give you a slap on the wrist. Uh, you've done nothing wrong. Fuck off. No, no. you basically trying to chat with a child. How could... Uh, like Whitney. Yeah, like... Whitney. What the fuck? Uh, I said earlier, Whitney's, Whitney seems like she'll be a great mum, but is a terrible partner. Just to reiterate that bit. Uh, but yeah, do you have anything else to say on on that stuff? I think we've wrapped it quite well. Uh, I love Zach. Like I love Zach and I said thing, Brittany. Like, yeah, Whitney, um, you and that uh, other bitch, um, we're having lasagna. Tell that other bitch that she like cheese. It's like Zach, Zach, Jesus, calm down. You know that other pre- like, like a racist when a black guy's in the room is like, tell that other. Bella, uh, would he like some cheese? And it's like, you, you could just call him Dave or Charlie, whatever his name is. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that, you know that fella. You know, I've no problem with black people, but you know that fella. Like, just tell him. Just tell him. Obviously, fellas were placed with the N word, and they say the N word constantly, and then they go up to the, the black guy's face, and the black guy just die, gets him. That's how I feel with Zach, where it's like, tell that other person. I'm like, it's Zach. I understand you child trafficking the child. <laughs> But like, yeah. um, you like you, you can't accept her. Like, yeah, I do uh, feel like how how the storyline might go is he finally accept her, I and mean, then he accepts her. Child services will step in and be like, "Well, you you want." Well, no, no, I think that I honestly think that Whitney will just leave before it. I think I think Zach won't be able to look past the fact that you know it's illegal, and he'll try get a set up, but she'll just leave and be like, "Fine, fuck you. you we don't want the same things." I I can't let that happen, but if you can, we're not supposed to be together. Fuck you, we're leaving, and then they go live with Bianca and Milton Keynes, or some. Maybe not. Maybe not with Bianca in the same spot. Maybe they'll move. <laughs> like, maybe not right next to where her her actual mum is. Um, but yeah, I like Brittany. I like Wit. Zach can fuck right off right now. He, I, he has a reason to be upset, but can you just just be consistent with it? Um, yeah, I, yeah, do, I do. I do love it. Let's like, finally... I do love that, I want it. Uh, sorry, but I just want to say, like, I, I hope to get more scenes where Sax just in the hype. Cause I love him being a night because he's like, he's like, he's like an incel and they're having sex for the first time. It's 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 my fault, not your fault. I came first. Yeah, yeah. I'm always doing it. Oh, leave me alone. It's what your you mean? fault. What do you mean? They be, yeah, they'd be saying it's your fault. Fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah, it's your fault. How dare you? How dare you make me come in one second? And I was like, ah, oh. that's yeah, how I, I feel about Zach. 
All right. Yeah, that's enough of that. Uh, let's talk about the Ben stuff. So Ben gets arrested on Callum's birthday. Ben is a terrible husband, doesn't fucking plan anything. And as they're celebrating Callum's birthday, Ben gets arrested over an international warrant. He committed fraud in the US when he was there last year. He fucking stole someone's credit card and used it. Fucking idiot. It's the most Ben Mitchell thing possible. Oh, I've got to go save Lola. Ah, oh, fuck it. This dickhead's credit card. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Guess I'll just take this expensive hotel and this fucking business class flight back to the UK. Ah, it's fine. Fucking idiot. What's wrong with him? The most Ben Mitchell way to get yourself arrested ever. Um, yeah, and at the end of the episode, Richie tells them, look, it's credit card, it's credit card fraud and it's stacked heavily against him. Ben asks Phil for a massive favor, which is Lexi and Jay going to see him, where he admits that he did it and she gives him the old, I'm not angry, I'm disappointed in you. Classic. Loved it. Classic. Loved it. Uh, and Phil and Jay have to convince Callum to go. Phil has a heart to heart with Callum and reminds Callum, like, look, look at how much you've helped him over the years, you know, accepting his trauma. Exp and generally, Phil knowing, like, why, why the worst parts of, like, essentially going, look, all the worst parts of Ben come from me. And I was like, yes, you fucking prick. <laughs> it's all fucking you. You're the problem, Phil. Um,. And yeah, I said, I also like wrote as a former Ben Mitchell stan, I am happy that they're accepting the worst parts of Ben. Like they're actually addressing it. They're not just saying, ah, oh, Ben's fine. Lol. He's not though, is he? A fucking prick. Uh, and just when you think it's all okay, Phil has some passports waiting. Kathy realizes something's up and sees Phil packing Lexi's, Lexi's stuff as they do as they work on a plan on uh, Ben and Lexi fleeing the country. But Richie tells Callum and Jay he's a flight risk. He's not coming home. Callum then yells at Ben for trying to be the main character and making Lola about himself. Again, more catharsis, more catharsis, because, yeah, fuck you, Ben. You, are, you do try to be the main character. It was really nice to see Callum be like, why the f... Essentially, be like, I fucking hate you sometimes. Because you just can't help yourself. And it's really, really fucking cool. It was like, you know, it was the, it was the most catharsis we were going to get over Ben's exit, considering, well, it's been pretty rushed and it's not really had as much time as it probably could have. Uh... One thing I find funny is fucking <laughs> some someone on on Twitter fucking took the piss by saying Ben commits a crime, asks Phil to kidnap Lexi for a life on the run. Phil ruthlessly gaslights Callum, who doesn't even want to see Ben. Lexi disowns Ben. Billy calls him stupid. Jay is sympathetic and takes Lexi to see Ben. And then they joke that the Ben stands are like, "I fucking hate Jay, the little fucking bastard. Fuck Jay. Jay's the problem." It's like, come on. Jay's actually trying to help Ben. Just briefly want to talk on this, if you don't mind. What is your thought on Stan? Like, are you a fan of Stan? I, 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 hold on, wait, let me just, let me just wrap through the final bits of this, as we're nearly at the end, then we'll kind of go through the Balam talk. Um, but yeah, so Callum kind of yells at Ben, and even calls out Ben for pitying him, for pitying him, pitying himself, which I was like, yes! Finally, Ben actually trying to take some fucking accountability for his actions. Uh, no, no, I was trying to save Lola. He's like, no, you were trying to save you. So yeah, fuck you, Ben. Um, and Callum genuinely says, look, if you love me, if you love Lexi, you will plead guilty and get an easier, like a, a shorter sentence. Um, and Ben says he will. And... Ben tells Callum to live and be free and he doesn't want him waiting on him. But shortly after, they kind of come back and reminds him like, look, I do love you. All right, we do love you. There's, I don't know if I'll ever love you like I've loved anybody else, you know, like all the emotional stuff and just saying like, look, all right, just I do love you and I'll never forget you. But 
you know, it's not like we can't live like this. So Balam is officially over. And this was indeed Ben Mitchell's final episode on the show for now. It's the end of the five year long Max Bowden reign as the character. And yeah, where do we want to start with it? Uh, do we want to start with a Stan conversation? Yeah. I don't mind stands as a former Ben Mitchell stan. I think it's an interesting way to get into a character and get into a show. But I feel like if you are a genuine soap st- like fan, at some point you get over just shipping two characters, in my opinion. Like if you do genuinely love soap, at some point you go from being a fucking stan and then you get over it, you get past it, and then you start to actually enjoy the show for everything else. I think the stands who just love two characters, I t- are necessary, don't need them. Like, it's, it, I understand watching for your favorite characters, but again, the only comparison I can really make is like when um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, when AW signed uh, a talent that was very good, Mercedes Monet. All the stands with, oh, she caught a promo. And, oh, for the TV. And it's like, you could watch for the others and try and get interested. I understand. It's how I feel like stands are. It's like, oh, Callum and Ben aren't in this scene. Fast forward, fast forward. Oh, they're in it now. It's over. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Oh, they're back. Let's go. It's like, uh, I, I don't like stands. I don't care if you are a fan. But don't fucking, don't make it your entire I, ego. Your yeah, personality. I, I don't think you should make it your entire personality. And I, I do still laugh at all of the, all of the Balam stands when this was announced. Like, oh, well, EastEnders is over now. It's all over. It's fucking wrap it up. You've taken away the most important part of the show. It's like, it's the only important to you and your set group of stands. And, like, stands aren't all bad because, you know, you do get some cool stuff. You get cool, like, compilations. You get cool, like, like videos about them like set to music you get called tributes and you know it's, it's like i don't i don't hate stands as a whole i think it's maybe not healthy but i think it's when it goes beyond where every waking moment is like spent about being like yes yes like i i, I can't lie i do find the people who wait for the spoilers just to see like a picture of your favorite characters like holding hands and you're like oh yes it's like what oh, come on come on there's you should be something else here this feels a bit weird now it's just i don't really know how to feel about stan culture as a whole because there is some like all right people but then you get the fucking very obsessed and stalkery type of stand you're like eh, take it off um, I understand no one's going to fucking Max Bowden's house and stalking him to see Callum or whoever plays Callum. Like, no one's stalking him. But I just don't like stands because I feel like it's a very weird genre. Like, again, you have your favourite characters. I don't mind. Like, mine is Terry, Dean, uh, Theo, you know, um, Mo. I don't... I Do I follow them on Instagram? Yes, on the Watchtick Walter account. Where it's strictly just for extenders. Yeah. On my personal Instagram account, I'm not following them because I, 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 I if I want to see how an actor is doing, I'll just follow their socials. And if they post, they post. If they don't, they don't. I'm not spending every waking moment thinking about Big Mo. Well, maybe some days, you know, I'm like, can't wait for Big Mo to come back. But there's a difference between having a thought and then releasing that thought and making it your entire personality. It's basically like if I come on this podcast next week, I dye my hair white. I have a big mold shirt on. I, I I somehow got shorter. I don't know how I get shorter. And I somehow got shorter, like five foot four, five. And I'm like, yeah, I'm big mold now. Like, no, no. Like, I, I understand. Like, again, I, it's not that I hate stands. It's just the fact that it's just, I mean, you love something so much. Maybe you need to get out there and actually figure out your life. Uh, that's what might sound weird. Well, because I think it's at these... some point it becomes a it becomes a bit toxic, really. It becomes a bit too like you become a bit too attached. Is the issue, yeah. uh, and you and don't want you... it to like you. You don't want to have it go that far that you're like. Mm. 
like again, I I don't mind. It's just like um, you know, like how celebrities, whenever they do something, they have camera people on them. I don't like that either. I know that's not with stands, but that kind of is. The stands would find like let's be honest, if if Taylor Swift's house got leaked tomorrow. You know, fucking people are rocking up in their Lamborghinis. Yeah. Like, like, up the in, what, what stands rocking up in their Lamborghini? That's all. Hey, Dad, how's your fucking going, Taylor? How's um, it going, Dad? But oh, I suppose man. just to just to slightly round this out, it's uh, stand cultures. It's something that if like allowed to go too far, it gets a bit much. And I do feel like a lot of the Balham stands kind of. I feel like a lot of them do put themselves at odds with these stenders because they love it because they love Balam, but they hate it because it's not the way they would do it. Um, it's, and... it's how I feel with people who are like, yeah, 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 you, you give me the pen to write a Spider-Man movie, I can fucking write a Spider-Man movie. And it's like, okay, 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 I'll hear you out, I'll hear you out, write a Spider-Man movie. He fights Venom. <laughs> Is that your entire pitch? Yeah, yeah, he just fights Venom. It's like it's like you give a Ben Nicks a stand, like a pen. All right, here you go. Here's a pen. Write whatever you want on that page. Write, try and write an East Enders episode. All right. Ben Mitchell appears. Callum appears. Give me my 50k. So. But, no. yeah, I suppose... Uh, it don't really... I don't have much more to say on that. I will say about the general Ben Mitchell character, I know at some point I was going to write a big piece about how the the, the character developed over the years. Um, uh, the character needs to heal. The character needs to get through stuff off screen. It needs to address its trauma. It needs to get past a lot of the tragic things that have happened. The next Ben Mitchell we see has to have had some fucking therapy has to actually confront the trauma because you know at the start interesting character you know ben he's a bit more criminal he's a bit more hardened he's had to do a bit more dodgy shit then just becomes phil 2.0 when you know in my head canon i feel like ben, i feel like ben will always fuck up trying to be like phil but the real development is realizing that phil is not a man to aspire to be phil is not a role model to anyone He's a failed husband. He's a fucking failed dad. His empire's dying. Like, he is his toxic masculinity to fuck. He is shit. But Ben's fucking main thing is he'll always keep trying to be enough for Phil. But in my brain, he should never be enough for Phil. There should always be that dissonance. should never truly accept him. We might run into a slight problem. I am not with these dangerous people when they want to bring back Ben because people might get upset that's not going to be Max Bowden. It might be. It might be. Don't get me wrong. It might be. But um, like I can see people being like, this is not my Ben yet. Bring back that. And it's like it's Harry, Harry Reid. Like, yeah. That, that's then, that's, that's my know, suggestion. Because you know this, the, the stands are going to be like, where's Max Bowden? Well, that's, I want Max. Um, we all want Max Brandon. Um, but like, it's just as G G Gabby is that their name? Gabby P. No, oh, no, G Gilby P. From our Discord. Gil Gilby P. As they pointed out, like the Ben Mitchell has been basically ran into the ground. Yeah. And there is nowhere to go. There is no direction. It's basically like imagine you're writing a story and you have the story fleshed out, but you can't write an ending. It's, it's, yeah, I do think the ending was fairly rushed in a sense because, you know, he probably, I would have expected he would have had a bit more of a, like, sad exit where he actually confronts some of his grief, confronts some of his trauma, but he never did. And where, where I suppose my issues with the character is, is that he was never allowed to... He was never allowed to get better. He was never allowed to improve. He was never allowed to work through his issues. As it was just trauma into more trauma into more trauma. 
And then you're just supposed to have the Callum Ben relationship fucking tacked on, and it's never progressing happy, and it's never like developing into a loving fucking relationship because, as Callum said, Ben always has to be the main character. And I do like how it was written into the scenes, and I do enjoy how they finally addressed it. But in order for the Ben Mitchell character to come back and be have the potential truly realized. You need to recast the actor. You need to give him a year or two or three years just to have everybody have everybody start to miss Ben Mitchell as a character. And then I personally would still bring back Harry Reid as the character to balance out less of the more criminal side and more of the actually wanting to be happy, which is what the Harry Reid Ben Mitchell was trying to fucking do the whole time. He was trying to be happy with who he was and be happy with Phil and be happy with Jay and be happy with Paul. Um, And I feel like a lot of that heart and a lot of that genuine want to be happier was gone because the trauma overtook everything. And that's, you know, that's reasonable. It's fair enough. Was how the character was. He had a terrible fucking existence the last five years. But we cannot have the same fucking Ben Mitchell when the character's brought back. I agree uh, with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Um, I just, my, again, my Ben Mitchell is Harry Reid or that fucking child one who's like, get a running, snapping down. Good He's just more Jones. of a meme, honestly. What? Charlie Jones. Yeah, Charlie Jones. Like, um, he's more of a meme one. Like, I don't see, if he came back, it'd be like sacked to me. I mean, Whereas, he was like, still he was still a good Ben Mitchell. He was, uh, you know, that frightened it, kid having to move across the world. You know, like it's just it's just the fact, like if if uh, Charlie Jones came back, I'll be like, it, lads, it was fun, but please, no, Harry Reid or Max Bowden is the way to go. But no one standards. They're gonna be like, well, Jerry, it's been two years. We're gonna recast Ben again. Yeah, you, you, it's you always a risk. Harry. Like if we, no, I, I, I really don't think the the Max Bowden Ben, I, I, I don't think they they're capable of writing him in any other way. Uh, and I, I don't want to see him back ever. I think he was a he was a great servant. He did somewhat carry the show at a fairly rough time. Um, but ultimately, it's just not. It wasn't. Like I said, the amount of damage it's done to the character is pretty unforgivable, in my opinion. Uh, and, you know, I say this as a fucking... I'm a former Ben Mitchell stan. Ben Mitchell used to be, one like, my favourite character in Soap. Like, he was genuinely the character I, I loved. But the main issue is this Ben Mitchell doesn't reflect any of the previous ones. Like, he doesn't look like Ben Mitchell, he doesn't act like Ben Mitchell, and he's constantly trying to one-up... He's, he's, he's somehow trying to one-up Phil in just being shit. Um, but yeah, it's just... I was, like I said, I was going to do this... I was going to write, like, this big script talking about, talking about Ben and, like, how the character progressed and what made that Ben Mitchell work. And ultimately... This Ben Mitchell fails in all of the criteria. And I don't think it's an issue with the actor necessarily, but I think the direction was just fucking garbage. Um, and I, I agree. Like, I just don't know how to feel about this iteration of Ben. He doesn't really... like. It, it, it's like a dream you have. But you don't know whether it's real or it's fair. And you're, you wake up and you're sat at the end of the bed and you're like, is that real? Was it fake? I mean, I'm so confused. Did, did you call me a knob in real life, or yeah. was I just dreaming that? And that's why I feel about the Max Bowden, like Ben. I, I'm like, is he, is he Ben? Is he not? It's hard to tell, but yeah, sometimes like, he's a Ben, I, and I sometimes could, he's not Ben. Yeah, I, I could easily suggest that this Ben Mitchell could have genuinely been a distant relative of Phil's. Like, you could have brought him in as, like, a friend of the family. And you could have him at odds with Ben Mitchell as he is the character... He is the character that wants this 
to fucking like he is the character who wants to be what 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 Phil loves. And you could have had him at odds with the Ben Mitchell, but no, you made it Ben Mitchell, and it just didn't reflect. Just didn't reflect it, in my opinion, unfortunately. I think I've kind of run this topic ragged at this point. Is there any other angle to take this discussion? It's just, um, it, it's just what what do you want to see from Ben now, Ash? What do you want to see? Uh, like I said, I want Ben to... I want him to address the trauma, or I want the writers to address the trauma that he's been through. I want him to have gone through a lot of therapy. Obviously, I'm not, like, fucking downplaying, like, the amount of trauma that he has suffered, because it's a lot of fucking trauma, right? I have to work on, work on it a lot to even get past it. But I want him to be able to put his past in the past, and I want him to be able to realize that he doesn't need to be the focus of everything. I just want him to I want him to emotionally mature. I want him to develop into a better person and I want the characters to keep fucking Like I said, they need to they need it's kind of like the Sam Mitchell thing where I don't feel like the Ben Mitchell character's been allowed to grow since 2020. Like, I don't feel like the character's been allowed to actually be happy since, like, 2019 when he got married to Callum, you know? I don't feel like they've been allowed... I don't, rem I don't remember when they got married. It's probably, like, 2021, but who the fuck cares? Someone will correct me in the comment section. Uh, but it felt like beyond the marriage, she was never happy. And that was the biggest issue because he was just never allowed to improve. It's like, it's like, it genuinely felt like they were keeping this fucking, you, 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 I made this joke on another podcast, but you know when like the, bu when the bullies keep that kid around just because that kid's a bit of a fucking, uh, <laughs> melt, uh, he's a bit of a melt. So they just bully him relentlessly. I feel like they just kind of kept the Ben Mitchell and just went, oh, Ben, Ben, you, you, you know what's happening today? Well, well, Ben, you're yeah, you're getting sexually assaulted. Yeah, great, <laughs> great. Yeah, that that's great. Oh, oh, Ben, and uh, your marriage is gonna struggle. And yeah, it's just like I said, make Ben not the main character. Give him some time away, and through time, people will start to miss him, and the stench that came off the Max Bowden Mitchell will eventually fucking fade. I don't know if they retconned it all. It's my fault if I died. Yeah, you can't retcon it all. But, uh, I mean, we can simply start to start to round it out, though, as that's it from me. That's all that my Ben Mitchell talk. Like I said, a character I used to love, but unfortunately became a character I came to hate, and a character that continued to be unremarkable and constantly boring and shit. And ultimately... Yeah. Do you have anything else to say about Ben Mitchell? Oh, fuck. Hold on. There we go. Yeah. No, I've got nothing else to say. All right. So let's do final thoughts of the week. How did you find the week, I guess? I enjoyed the week. It was a pretty good week. Um, I, 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 it was a good week. I just am not, I was not happy with Ben Mitchell stuff. Yeah, fair enough. It'd be quite hard to, uh, be quite difficult to actually like if you don't like the Ben character it is a bit shit <laughs> unfortunately I will say uh, but yeah I suppose me too it wasn't the most exciting week either like we had the Gene stuff we had the Ben stuff I liked it was a bit more down to earth but obviously it's the lull before the high of next week where shit's gonna go down but it was a decent enough week. I didn't hate it. Uh, and I guess it gave me an excuse to finally let out all of my final thoughts about Ben Mitchell because I'm not going to have to talk about him for fucking ever. Well, probably not for a couple more years. So, Whoa. that was therapy, mate. I've been ha having all these thoughts fucking flying around my head for the last several years. And now we can finally put it to rest. Uh, but let's do the awards. Uh, let's start with who needs slapping down. 
Yeah, fair enough. Ben does need slapping down. I do agree. Oh, uh, Zach. Or Zach, yeah. No, I'll say Zach because Zach just, like I said, stop blowing hot and cold. Be consistent, please. Zach's just an amalgamation of Reddit, apparently. They can't make up their fucking minds. Uh, still underrated next. Who do you reckon's underrated? Um, oh, that's... Uh, I want, I want, I want to say Yolanda because she was called on a stupid old bitch, and um, I just, I, I understand you're not supposed to laugh at that scene, but it's delivered like you know, like the the Sharon Mitchell mean one is like, my son is in the kitchen, sit, sit room or kitchen eating a biscuit. The yeah. way he says it is like, you stupid old bitch, and it's like, Jesus, he put some oomph into it. Oh yeah. He put some oomph into it. Like, like, like I was, oh, I, I was dying laughing. I was fucking dying because he's just, he's just, you, you stupid old bitch. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, he definitely worked his way into it. He worked his way into it. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for Brittany. I like Brittany. I think it'll be quite, it'll be quite sad to see that we're not gonna fucking see her for several years. So she may not even be the same like actor, like. It, we won't even see her for like five years or whenever the fuck, whenever the fuck Whitney comes back. So, yeah, it's just kind of one of them things. Uh, and finally, for the Keanu Taylor Award of Excellence, the most wooden performance this week, uh, I'm going to say Peter for fucking bringing a date at his ex's 30th birthday party. What a fucker! What an absolute bastard. Why is he doing that for? He's he's having a date in the same place. Have it somewhere else, you fucking rotten bastard. Like, it's... Who, who has a date in the same place that your ex's birthday's happening? Come on. Fucking dickhead. Yeah. Uh, did you say who is, gets the award? Uh, for a while. Uh, uh, the Keanu Taylor or? Oh, the most wooden. Um, oh. um, yeah, it, it's the way, it's the way that, um, what the fuck's his Denzel says, bitch. Oh, Denzel. yes, yes, yeah, sorry. It's been a long one. It's been a hefty podcast this time. I hope people enjoyed it. I do hope to see people's thoughts and comments about the Ben Mitchell stuff and or the other stuff we talked about today. Uh, obviously, I will say just a, still the update. The Q and A will the questions will be uh, what you have till Thursday next week to uh, submit all your questions. We we'll record it on the Friday, and also we'll be doing the fan fiction on the Tuesday or the Wednesday when we get in. And so that will be in person. So if that's the update you're waiting for, and finally. Just want to thank everybody for watching the podcast and engaging with us. Thanks to all the people in the Discord who are talking to us about the EastEnders. It's always a good time to get what you people. She Wolford Podcast, episode 65. We thank you for watching and we, we implore you to join us in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.